following such conclusions, the demoniac, who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence, engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. You can all please repeat. Following such conclusions, following such conclusions the demoniac, the demoniac who, are lost to themselves, who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence, and who have no intelligence engage in unbeneficial, engage in unbeneficial horrible works. Horrible work. Meant to destroy the world. Meant to destroy the world. And then put forth by Shilla Prabhupada. The demoniac are engaged in activities that will lead the world to destruction. The Lord states here that they are less intelligent. The materialists According to Bhagavad Gita, they are unintelligent and devoid of all sense. They try to they try to enjoy this material world to the utmost limit, and therefore they engage in inventing something for sense gratification. Such materialistic inventions are considered to be advancement of human civilization, but the result of the but the result is that people grow more and more violent and more and more cruel, cruel to animals and cruel to other human beings. They have no idea how to behave towards one another. Animal killing is very prominent amongst demoniac people. Such people are considered the enemies of the world because ultimately they will Ultimately, they will in, invent or create something which will bring destruction to all. Indirectly, indirectly, this verse, this verse uh, anticipates the miseries of. of and anticipates the, the invention of nuclear weapons of which the whole world is today 
I'm very proud. At any moment, there may be, they may take, like, at any moment, war may take place, and these atomic weapons may create havoc. Such things are created solely for the destruction of the world. And this is indicated here. Due to God, due to godlessness, such, such weapons are invented in human society and they are not meant for the peace and prosperity of the world. Om Jnana 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 Shalakaya Chakshur Nirvitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadarati Swapadam Yadam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Saratatam Sahagana Ravanatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sarvaitam Sahadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chakatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishamanu Sute Devi Pranamani Hari Kriye Pancha Kapata Rajagun and Tamagun. 
very unusual for people to ever mention anything about the more goodness. Material world is only full of passion and ignorance. So that's very prominent. And we're going to hear about this today. This verse is about passion and ignorance. Anyway, chapter 14 was describing the three modes of material nature. And then chapter 15 went on with uh, Yoga Purushottam, the Yoga of the Supreme Person. And Lord Krishna began by giving the example of the banyan tree that he compared the material world to re the reflection of a tree because the re in the reflection the branches go down and the roots are up. So Lord Krishna was comparing the material world to the banyan tree and he was describing how the lower regions of the tree are darkness and ignorance and the upper region of the tree that's going more to goodness, to the, the divine. So that's chapter 15. You hear about the lower modes of nature, how it's dark, and on the upper region it's light, the upper region of the tree. So then, here we have chapter 16, Lord Krishna again is speaking about these two natures, that there's the lower nature and then there's the higher nature. The lower nature is the mode of passion and ignorance, the Rajo and Tamagun. And the upper nature is the mode of goodness, what we would call Sattvic. So the upper regions are associated with the divine quality. And Lord Krishna began this 16th chapter by enumerating 26 different qualities which are related to the divine nature. And Lord Krishna explains, by engaging in devotional service, you will cultivate these qualities. But Lord Krishna then goes on to speak about the other nature, the the demoniac nature. The demoniac nature is connected with the lower modes of nature, the modes of passion and ignorance. And Lord Krishna enumerated six qualities there which are particularly associated with the mode of uh, with the mode of demoniac, with the demoniac nature. Uh, beginning with pride, and pride, that is the, the pillar of the demoniac nature. The pride, arrogance, anger, conceit, harshness, these different things are the qualities of the demoniac nature. The divine nature is important to understand that by cultivating the divine nature, then it is conducive to transcendence, to liberation, to getting free from the material world. But if you're in the lower nature, if you're having the demoniac qualities, then you're entangled in the lower mode of nature. You're going to be bound up tightly by this mode of material nature and it will be very difficult to ever transcend the material nature. It's possible, but very difficult, much harder, because you're way down in the bottom. So to get free from the lower nature, it's a big struggle. If you're already in the mode of goodness, then to transcend, it's only a little further up. You just have to go a little higher and you can get over the material nature and come to the transcendental platform. But if one is entangled deep down in the modes of passion and ignorance, then it's a big jump up 
to come up to the transcendental level. Therefore, we hear in Prabhupada's purports, he's often emphasizing the need for us to come up to the mode of goodness, to cultivate that mode of goodness and come to that higher nature. Because then from the mode of goodness, then one can transcend much easier. So here in the verse today, Lord Krishna is describing the activities of those who are in the modes of passion and ignorance. And what, what are they doing? Uh, Lord Krishna uses the word Ugra Karmana. Ugra Karmana. Horrible, painful works meant to destroy the world. This is the business of people in the mode of passion and ignorance. They're very busy thinking how to destroy the world. They're not thinking how to save the world. They're not thinking how to give people eternal life. They're thinking how to kill people, how to destroy people. And practically every country in the world, they have a huge budget for defense. They call it defense. And what are they actually doing? They're cultivating weapons to destroy others. They want the most vicious, the most deadly weapons which can annihilate the enemy. And each nation is engaged in that. They will spend huge amounts of their resources to, to buy weapons, to buy bombs and so on. And we often hear, it's reported, when a country will test one of their nuclear weapons, it will be announced in the news that they have dropped, they have dropped this bomb to test the power of their weapons. And they're very proud that, oh, we released a great bomb and we, we're successful that we can wipe out so many people all at one time. And they think this is a great achievement. Just like, uh, I'm just coming from Vietnam. So, in Vietnam, of course they, had a, they were at war for a long time with the U.S. The U.S. forces were trying to keep, you know, they didn't want Vietnam becoming communist and they were fighting, trying to keep Vietnam from taking up that communist path. But finally they left. They gave up. They, you know, they... But before they left, what did they do? They dropped certain chemicals on the land to ruin the land so that the people would never be able to grow food, not for many, many years. They had these special chemicals which they spread everywhere throughout the land just so that for, to ruin the agriculture. Is it a very simple business? This, this is demoniac. This is what goes on in the name of warfare. People do the most horrible, terrible things to each other. We're very expert at doing harm to each other. We don't think about how to help each other, how to benefit each other, but we're very expert when it comes to doing harm to them. And we can do the most things. And history is full of instances of this going on. My late uh, sannyasi, the 
And yes, he, uh, Kadamakana Swami Maharaj, he used to talk about how they make radioactive waste when they produce atomic energy. They have a lot of nuclear waste. And the nu nuclear waste, they didn't know what to do with it. Because it's radioactive and it can do great harm. So what to do with it? Oh well, we'll throw it into the bottom of the ocean. And it will be all right there for the next 30 or so years. Let people worry about it after 30 years. We don't know what to do with it ourselves. Let them worry about it. That's the money. You let other people take care. You create the mess, you create the waste, and then you leave it for other people to clean up. That is not very saintly. So, this is the demoniac mentality. And people, uh, Prabhupada used to talk about how nations are doing many inventions. They're inventing how to kill more and more people. How to rapidly kill people. Just like one gun was not enough, they have to have machine guns. Because with machine guns, you can kill more people, more quickly. So this is a great advancement. You have machine guns now. They don't think about how to save people life, the life of people. How to save people? Oh no, don't worry about it. Think how to kill them. You know? That's what gives pleasure to the demons. Those people who are Asurik, they take pleasure in that, in killing and giving pain to others. And Prabhupada also talks how we give pain to the animals also. Nobody thinks about it when they sit and eat their burgers, when they go to their fried chicken or whatever. They don't think about the animals and what they suffer. They only think about their time. So this is demoniac. This is the mentality of the demons. Killing animals everywhere it goes on around the world. So we're trying to educate people about the real value of life. How to make proper use of the human form of life. And how to change people from being demons to make them into devotees. In other ages, you know, the Rakshasas and the Asuras, they would be killed. Lord Rama, in the Treta Yuga, he had a bow and astras, and he could kill many Rakshasas. And similarly then, Lord Krishna arranged Kurukshetra war to relieve the earth of the burden of so many demoniac people. But now is the Kali Yuga and practically everyone is of the demonic mentality. The demoniac nature is so pervasive that practically everyone, the world would have to be in, all the population would have to be annihilated because the, the whole situation, the, the level of consciousness of the people in the world today is so bad that practically everyone is influenced by the mode of passion and ignorance. So how to save them? We don't want to kill them. How to change them? And that is why Lord Chaitanya came and taught the Sankirtan movement. It is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Kaler dosha nide rajan astihe ko magaguna kirtanar eva krishnasya mukta sangha parambrajit. 
that the age of Kali is described as an ocean of falls. An ocean of falls. Right? We're not very godly people. Srila Vyasadeva already described our mentality in Srimad Bhagavatam in the very beginning, practically, in the first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, he describes the mentality which we have in this Kali Yuga. Paprayeno payusasabhya kalovas minyugejana manda samanda matayo manda bhagyahi upadrutaha. First of all, in the Kali Yuga, we have a short life. Our life is short as it is, but still people want to end it. People want to take to killing. And you get so many things. Often very mass murders. Somebody comes with a gun and shoots people. It goes on regularly. We have a short life. It's not short enough for some people. They want to make it shorter. Anyway, Kali Yuga, as Kali Yuga progresses, the life will become shorter and shorter by nature. Just the nature of this Kali Yuga, the nature of the environment, our duration of life will reduce. In the Christian Bible, they speak about three score years and ten. Three score. One score is a measure of twenty. So, so three score means sixty. And then add on ten, seventy. So seventy years is the average duration of life in the Kali Yuga. We don't have a long life. Other ages, we you know, Satya Yuga people live one life. Shrita Yuga, 10,000 years. Dwapara Yuga, 1,000 years. Kali Yuga, not even 100 years. And it becomes less as Kali Yuga goes on. And, if, and if, by the end of Kali Yuga, when you are 40 years old, you'll be very old man. So that is one of the symptoms of the age of Kali that we have the short life. Then we are described some of the different characteristic qualities in the Kali Yuga. That we are lazy. We're generally lazy people. We see things like we have, we have stairs to walk up. But who walks up the stairs? Everyone has a, there's a lift. Put the lift in, take the lift up. Nobody's going to walk upstairs. Nobody's going to walk. Everybody has cars, especially in Malaysia. Everybody's got a car to go around. People don't walk. They don't even build a pedestrian pathway for people to walk anymore. It's only for cars. It's dangerous to walk. You get run over. So, we're lazy, we don't like to cook, people all want to go out to eat, especially in Singapore, Malaysia, everybody's eating outside on the weekend. Who eats at home? They build houses today, they don't even put kitchens in the houses. People don't like to cook, they don't need, they don't need a kitchen, we'll eat outside. And and so that, that is, again, laziness. Many different ways we're lazy. We're misguided also. Misguided that we don't know who to follow. Even if we're looking for spiritual guidance, we don't know where to find a genuine teacher or how to recognize who is a genuine teacher and what is a genuine path. So we're easily misguided. We're unlucky, unlucky that we're often cheated. Maybe you try to do investment and you're trying to make more money and you end up losing all your money. 
unlucky. <laughs> unlucky in many different ways. We're unlucky. Maybe you think, I'll go for a holiday, and you go for a holiday and something bad happens to you. Oh, bad luck. So, we have our own luck as well to deal with. But above all, Sula Vyasadev said, in the Kali Yuga, everyone is disturbed. Nobody has peace of mind. So disturbance of the mind, that is another big problem in the Kali Yuga. How to help people just get peace of mind. And you go to the pharmacy and you see everywhere there's chemist shops, pharmacies everywhere. And they're full of many different pills and things to give you peace of mind just to help you control your mind. Pills to help you sleep at night because we're not able to sleep even. Difficult to get dressed at night. Mind is so disturbed. Mind is so agitated. This is again the characteristic of this Kali Yuga. So how to overcome these problems? So many difficulties are there. The demoniac nature is there. So many bad things. How to overcome it? Just simply by saying kirtan. So, kirtanareva krishnasya mukta sangha parampurji. Simply by kirtan, one can get all perfection. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore came to teach everyone the importance of the same kirtan movement the chanting of the holy names of God. We were just reciting the Shikshastikam prayers before the beginning of the class. We were reciting those wonderful verses which are given to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. From Mahaprabhu's own mouth, he has described the glories of Sankirtan. And he says, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Let there be all glories to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan. So what is that Sankirtan? Sankirtan is not just only chanting the holy name, but it's coming together with the devotees and chanting the holy name becomes especially powerful when the devotees join together and take part in Sankirtan. Of course, just a few, few weeks back you had Kirtan Mela here and you had for several days you had nice Kirtan going on, many devotees contributing and chanting the holy name and certainly it's very powerful and purifying for everyone. But we need that Sankirtan regularly. We need to have Sankirtan practically every day. You need Sankirtan. Therefore, that's, that's why we have a temple. The temple is, we come here and we have Sankirtan. We perform Sankirtan. But not only in the temple, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the Sankirtan movement out of the temple. Because Mahaprabhu knew that not everyone can get in the temple. Kali Yuga, it, there are restrictions. Who is allowed to come in the temple? There are certain temples you cannot get in. You get, for example, if I go to Jagannath Puri, I don't get inside. I can have darshan of Patita Pavan Jagannath, who is at the doorway, but I can't go inside the door because the temple is restricted to those people who are born as Hindu. I was reading Jaipataka Swami Maharaj was giving class and someone asked him about how could we arrange to get 
every all our devotees that they could get into the temples and have darshan. So he describes, he said, because Prabhupada had also told him, he said, try, he said, you can try, he said, you can ask Shankaracharya. So Jagpataka Swami went to Shankaracharya. I don't know which Shankaracharya it was, but he went to one of the Shankaracharyas and he asked him, he said, uh, you know, because Shankaracharya is the head of the temple in Jagannath Puri, at least. So it must have been Shankaracharya Puri. And so he said, uh, he asked the Shankaracharya, he said, can you arrange that we Westerners can get in the temple to have darshan of the Lord? So Shankaracharya looked at him and said, said yes. He said, you know what you have to do? He said, you purchase one gallon of ghee and boil it and drink it. So Jagpataka Swami said to him, he said, well, I'll die if I do that. He said, yes, but next life you can be born as a Hindu and you can get darshan of the Lord <laughs> So that was what Shankaracharya said. <laughs> Interesting. So, anyway, uh, Srila Prabhupada didn't worry about these things. Not so important. We get darshan every year at Rathiatra time. Lord Jagannath is so merciful that he comes out of the temple to give everyone his darshan. So that is the special feature of worship of Lord Jagannath. Of course there are other temples like Shakshi Gopal. Shakshi Gopal, the witness deity. We also cannot go in there. But sometimes Shakshi Gopal comes out, right? He comes out to be the witness. So, you, you have to be patient. You want to see the Lord. So we want to understand the benefit of Sankirtan. This Sankirtan movement, this is what changes people from the demoniac to divine. Simply by chanting of the holy name, the association with the holy name of the Lord changes the heart of all the conditioned souls. Example is given, just like you have a metal bar. So you put the metal bar in the fire and if you leave it in the fire long enough, it becomes like fire and it can also burn. So in the same way, our heart is like a metal bar. It is hard and it is like stone. But that heart, although it's very hard, it can become soft by contact with the holy name of the Lord, by hearing the glories and chanting the glories of the Lord, the heart can be changed. So this is the power of Sankirtan. So it is described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the very first verse of the Shikshastika. Chaito Darpana Marjana that it cleanses the heart, cleanses the mirror of the mind. Chaito Darpana, Darpana the mirror, Marjana, cleanse, just like we have Gurdicha Marjanam. When we come to Rati Atra, the day before Rati Atra, we have Gundicha Marjanam. When we clean the temple, and you can read in the Chaitanya Charitamrita the description how Lord Chaitanya would go with all the devotees and he would clean the whole temple and everyone would become purified and clean out all the dust, all the weeds, all the grains, everything was cleaned out to make the whole place fully sanctified. So 
this is marjanam, gundicha marjanam, to clean out all the dirt, all of the dirt in our heart, which we call anarthas. They have to be all removed, right? Chaito darpana marjanam, to cleanse the heart of all the dirt all the dust accumulated for years together. So cleaning the heart is a very demanding business. Just as cleaning the temple is also very demanding. How much more demanding it is to clean the heart because we're working with the subtle. To clean the temple it's more gross, physical, all right, the dust, but to clean the heart, to get rid of the lust and the anger and the greed and the envy and the illusion and all of the other different anarthas which are there within the heart, it is very challenging. But by chanting the holy name, then we can achieve this, but, and particularly through performing Sankirtan. Therefore, you see that in the past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he spoke philosophy only to a few people. For example, he spoke to Sarva Bhattacharya, who was the head of the Jagannath, he was also one of the main, main priests in the Jagannath Puri temple. And then he spoke philosophy with Ramananda Rai. And he spoke a little philosophy with uh, Prakashananda Sarasati. But generally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not discuss philosophy with many people. For the mass of people, it was Sankirtan, the chanting of the Holy Name. And he wanted everyone to join in the Sankirtan. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, then Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, they also very much encouraged the Sankirtan. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he, he gathered thousands of people to go on Parikrama in Navadvip and they had hundreds of Madangas and thousands of devotees and they were chanting the Holy Name. So, doing the Parikrama, you get the benefit of all the five angas which are so important in devotional service. Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he has listed 64 different ways in which we can perform devotional service. But then he has particularly highlighted five different types of devotional service. And he says, a little attachment for any one of these five can give you all perfection. So these five items are, first of all, chanting the holy name, then hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures, and then, and then associating with devotees, and then residing in the holy place and worshipping the deity. So when you go on Parikrama, you have all five, all there in the Parikrama. You're chanting the holy name, you're hearing the kata, you're associating with devotees, you're in the holy dham, and you're worshipping the deity. We take deities with us. So in this way, Sankirtan becomes so powerful when you're doing the Parikrama. But anywhere Parikrama, 
Anywhere thank you Tana can be very powerful. It can help give us the greatest perfection, the chanting of the holy name, because it cleanses the heart. So that is the first benefit which is given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaito Darpana Marjana. And then he said, Bhava Bhava Mahadavakni Nirvapana. That it extinguishes the blazing fire of material life. Material life is like being in a blazing fire. There are so many problems, so many anxieties, so many difficulties from moment to moment. Who causes the problems? Who causes the problem? You, you can't blame anybody. It just happens. You can't blame anyone. The forest fire, the fire will take place. The bamboo rubs together, produces a spark, and there are dry leaves, and there immediately you get a forest fire. Who caused it? Well, the wind caused it, because the wind blew, the bamboo rubbed together, produced sparks. Who caused it? Who causes the fire of material life? The blazing fire of material life. Who caused it? Who is giving me all of these difficulties? It's just the nature of this material world. But we're given the solution how to extinguish the blazing fire of material life. Just like the blazing heat of the summer. We've been experiencing great heat. It's been so hot, but then came the monsoon, heavy rain, torrential rain, extinguishing the fire. So in the same way, the fire of material life is extinguished by Sankirtan, by taking up the Sankirtan movement, joining the Sankirtan party, chanting the holy name and tasting the nectar of the holy name. It is so relishable to join the same Kirtan and leave behind all of your anxieties. I remember when I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, I was given the service to be in charge of the incense business. We used to make incense. Uh, it was called Spiritual Sky Incense. So it was in 19, uh, you know, early 1970s, everyone was in, in, in the UK. The incense was very popular, you know, everywhere people were purchasing it. So we had this business making incense. So somehow they got me to be in charge of the business. The problem was I was the only person giving money to the temple. We didn't have a congregation at the time to provide income to support the temple. And the money for the temple came from the incense business. So they were always telling me, come on, give more money, give more money. You know, I'm trying to, we would make the incense, we would pack the incense, and then have to go and sell it as well, you know? And they were always coming, give more money, come on, give more money, give more money. So I was always in anxiety because they were always asking for money. But this devotee, this one devotee, Tripavanatha, very wonderful devotee, he's not in this world anymore, he left the world a few years ago, some kind of cancer. But he was, he was a temple president. Actually, he was, he was about 18 years old. And he was a temple president of our London temple. Tells you what this one was like <laughs> in the beginning. So he would say to me, you go on Sankirtan. <laughs> and he would tell me, just forget the incense, just go out on Sankirtan. 
and I would go out on Saint Kirtan. And sit one time after being out on Saint Kirtan for a day, I was joyful. I was very happy. I couldn't understand why I come to Krishna consciousness. When I was selling the incense, doing the incense business, I was thinking, I don't know why I'm here, why I'm doing this. <laughs> but when I go on Saint Kirtan, then it would all make sense that this is why I joined Krishna consciousness. So Saint Kirtan is very important for all the devotees. Everyone should join the Saint Kirtan party as soon as you can take part in the Saint Kirtan. And if you don't go out for Saint Kirtan, at least you do Kirtan in your own home. You have regular Kirtan at home. You don't just make offerings. You know, you have your nice altars and you make offerings and then eat and no kirtan. You must always be, you must always have kirtan in your home. Regular kirtan. Very important. This, this is what puts out the fire of material life. That material life is certainly not a very enjoyable kind of life. So much anxiety, so much stress, so many problems. But once you start to chant the holy name and take part in the Sankirtan movement, then you can experience the real spiritual atmosphere. It is there. It's there for us. We just have to reach out. You have to take part in the Sankirtan. As, as Lord Chaitanya says in his Shikshastikam, it gives us a taste of the full nectar for which we are always anxious. A taste of the full nectar. We're, we want to enjoy bliss. We're looking for bliss. We want to taste that ultimate happiness. And it's actually there in the holy name and in performing Saint Kirtan. We can experience that nectar for which we are always anxious. So Lord Chaitanya encourages all of us with this Saint Kirtan movement. We are propagating the Saint Kirtan. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predicted it would be heard. Priti Viti Achiyat Nagar Adigram Sarvatra Prachalhai De Morana. That the holy name would be heard in every town and every village all over the planet. So Srila Prabhupada encourages us to go on and fulfill this prediction. Prabhupada put the, the, the foundation and we have to go on and complete the task and deliver that holy name everywhere, to every home. We want every, everywhere there should be this chanting of the holy name. So we're trying to establish this chanting of the holy name. Not only do we want to give the holy name, we also want to taste the holy name our own self. Of course, if we give the holy name, that is very good also. If you give the name to someone, you get even more benefit from the holy name. So we want to, when we meet people, we will greet them by saying, Hare Krishna. We're known as the Hare Krishna people. We don't just say Namaskar or Tavadi Kap, Nihama or Gomisaka, you know? But we say Hare Krishna. We like to chant the holy name. The holy name should be always on the lips of the devotees. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told us, Kirtani Yasada Hari, always chant the holy name. If we don't chant the holy name, then we forget Krishna. 
And as soon as we forget Krishna, we remember Maya. It doesn't take any time at all. As soon as you put the light out, immediately the darkness is there. And in a similar way, as soon as we forget Krishna, immediately Maya comes. And we start thinking how to enjoy the material energy. Krishna Bhuliya Jeev Anadir Bahir Mukha Itaiva Maya Taradeya Samsara Dukha Forgetting Krishna since time immemorial this is, we, we have simply turned to Maya the Bahir Mukha the Bahir, the external energy right? There's the Antaranga Shakti and the Bahir Anga Shakti Antaranga Shakti is a spiritual energy where there is eternity, bliss and knowledge. But we are not looking at the Antaranga Shakti, we are looking at the Bahir Anga Shakti. So Krishna Bhuliyaji, we've forgotten Krishna. Anadir Bahir Mukha. When? We've very long ago, a very long time ago, we forgot Krishna. And what, what has happened? We have turned to this Bahir Mukha, this external energy, the material world. And we are looking at the material world for our enjoyment. And Prabhupada describes what happens, how do people try to enjoy the material world? by their different inventions. We will invent something for our sense gratification. Just like someone invented air conditioners for their sense gratification. Air conditioner, they may make, make one room cool, but they make the whole planet very hot. The hope you've got global warming and the, the result is snow peaks are melting, different ice caps are melting, the, the, the ocean level is rising, land is going to be flooded more and more. We create so many imbalances in nature. We are thinking, oh very nice, advancement. Comfort, AC, but with every good thing, there's the bands. There's two sides to the coin, right? You have the head on one side, the tails on the other side. So along with the comfort, there comes so many discomforts. What we think is something good for our comfort, there will come so many bad things. Just like motor cars. Motor cars, we enjoy driving, comfort, but there are so many problems also. The pollution, the parking, the damage. With, with everything, there's the, the back side, the B side. So the problems come. Forgetting Krishna. Krishna Bhulya Jeev Anadir Mahir Mukha Itaiva Maya Taradeha Samsara Dukha Because we have forgotten Krishna since time immemorial and because we have been enjoying the material energy the result is we remained in the material world of birth and death and experienced more and more miseries of life. We are thinking the world is becoming a better place, but actually it's just the opposite. It's becoming a worse place. It's becoming more and more unbearable, more and more problems. We have not, we're not solving any problems. We're creating the problems. Who created all the problems? Man or human beings, women also, 
not just men. <laughs> Women are also scientists and researchers. They also create a lot of problems. Not, it's not all men. But the human race, we are the ones, we are destroying the planet. The animals don't do any harm to the planet. It's the humans, what we do to it because of our demoniac nature. And how to change that demoniac nature? It can all be changed by Sankirtan, by getting more people to chant the holy name. That is the beginning of Krishna consciousness. A person's spiritual life begins when they start to chant the holy name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met with the Mayavadi sannyasis in Benares, Prakasananda Sarasati. Now usually Mahaprabhu, because he's a Vaishnava, he would not eat prasada. He would not even associate with the Mayavadi sannyasis. But somehow it was arranged that he could meet, he met with them and he discussed philosophy with them. And he Talk, he talked to them about the chanting of the holy name. And they all agreed. They said, yes, chanting Hare Krishna is very good. So when they chanted Hare Krishna, they thought, oh, now they're, they've begun their spiritual life. Because they said Hare Krishna. And if they say, they just utter even one time, then their spiritual life has begun. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, very nice. He agreed to take prasadam with them. Because now they're devotees. They chanted the holy name. They only chanted one time. But that is the beginning of their spiritual life. Let them go on from that now. So all of us as devotees, we also want to value the chanting of the holy name. It's very important for us to keep our Krishna consciousness. We have to regularly chant the holy name. If we're not chanting regularly, then we're in a precarious situation. And at any time, the material energy may overcome us and we will be put into the spell of Maya and think about plans to enjoy mundane sense gratification. In other words, we will forget Krishna. But if we remember every day to do our chanting, to make it our daily business, to keep that vow, to faithfully chant the holy name, that will keep us strong and that will protect us from the influence of this age of Kali. It, that will protect us from all of this Ugra Karma, horrible works which are to destroy the world. And there are so many things going on around the world which are all just for that, just to destroy the world, not to make it any better. We want to understand how to make good use. We have this human birth. Take advantage of it. Don't be miserly. Srila Prabhupada talks about miser means that he uses kripana, kripana, a miserly person. And the opposite is Brahmana. Brahmana is the generous person. Brahmana, whatever he has, he'll be willing to give, give it to others. We read, for example, the liberal nature of the Brahmana is described in Bhagavad Gita. Dronacharya. Dronacharya was a Brahmana. But he was so liberal that when Drishta Jumna came to him to study, he accepted him as a student. He knew that this Drishta Jumna is born to kill me. 
But he did not worry about that. He thought, he wants to learn. I am a Brahmana. It's my duty to teach him. You come. I will teach you. He did not think, this man is going to kill me. He, he wants to learn. He's come to me. I am a Brahmana. I must do my duty. I must teach him. That is the liberal nature of a Brahmana. The Dichi, another example of a liberal Brahmana. Indra came. Can you give me the bones from your body? I want to kill Vritasura. There was one in the big and Vrita. So I say, I need your bones from your body, right? So Tadichi said, oh, don't you know the body is the thing we're most attached to? And Indra said, well, you know, for some people it's difficult to give charity, you know. But sometimes it's also hard to ask for charity. Indra said, I'm asking for charity. It's not easy for me either. I'm asking you to give charity, but it's not easy for me either. I'm asking you to give. That he should say, oh, very good. Okay. He gave up his body and Indra got the bones. That is Brahmana nature. Brahmana. But actually, Brahmana, you must give. The duty is to give. The best thing we have to give is the holy name. And we give the holy name when we take part in that Sankirtan, when we go for that Sankirtan movement. I heard just last night, you had a nice program of Sankirtan. Very good. We want to encourage more and more the Sankirtan movement, the chanting of the holy name. Sometimes we go out at Sankirtan and Sometimes people say, hey, where have you guys been? I've never seen you for years. They used to see us every day. They haven't seen you for years. I didn't know you guys were still around. So thank you, Don. Very important. We do need to give the holy name to people. And that is what saves the world from going to hell. the body, he was staying in Hong Kong. He said, I'm in Hong Kong on my own. There's nobody else here. He said, I, said, I, I want to just leave. Prabhupada said, no, just stay there. He said, even to have one person chanting the holy name there is beneficial. He said, don't leave, just stay there, keep chanting. So try to understand the importance of the chanting of the Holy Name. It is our lifeline. That is the real vaccine which is going to protect us. And all of these other vaccines, you know, we don't know. But that vaccine of the Holy Name, that will protect us. That will give us the real protection which we need to save us from the evil influences of this age of power. So we'll stop now. We have 10 minutes left. We can, maybe there's some questions. Marichi Prabhu is here. He's always good to get a question from. I know Malaysians are very poor to get questions. Maharaj, I wanted to mention the importance uh, to upgrade no, from the mode of ignorance and passion to goodness and so on. Uh, but sometimes there is a tendency to think uh, that this is, doesn't apply to devotees. I, I wanted to ask you about this because uh, sometimes devotees say, oh, we offer everything to Krishna. So uh, there is no need for us to think like this, you know, like uh, to do to upgrade uh, you know, to the mode of goodness in our activities or in our food that we eat or anything. As I wanted to ask you whether the what is also we should uh, try to progress to the mode of goodness or if it's not necessary. Thank you.
Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for that question. We have to understand that although we're devotees, we're not necessarily pure devotees. And some of you may be pure devotees, but you know, we do have the tendency to be influenced by the modes of nature, the modes of passion, the modes of ignorance can also come in devotional service. While we may be performing devotional activities, we can be influenced by the modes of nature. Sometimes you, you know, you go in the kitchen and you're in an angry mood. Why I have to cook? <laughs> why I why I'm the one to always cook? Things like that. And sometimes you may even be engaged in deity worship and you're not pure, you're not clean, you didn't even take bath. You just, you know, think Hare Krishna, you will have to do the puja. You know? sometimes, so sometimes in the course of our devotional service, we do allow ourselves to be influenced by the modes of nature. We may get angry, you get in an argument, you know, we do sometimes do find, find devotees argue and fight with each other even. Can we say, well, it's my service to Krishna? No, of course not. We're influenced by the modes of nature. The modes of nature do come in the course of our devotional activities. So we cannot think that just because I'm a devotee, I'm initiating. So I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not influenced by passion and ignorance. It's up to every devotee to under, understand for his own self how much and when we're influenced by the lower modes of nature. The modes of nature do come in the course of our devotional activities. We have to be careful to avoid them. So coming up to the mode of goodness is also important for us as devotees. Hmm. Just like, I mean, maybe you work in a job. Most, people, most of you have jobs. You go out to work every day. Can you think everything you do in your work is in the mode of goodness or devotional service? Sometimes there will be passion, sometimes there will be ignorance. The modes of nature are going to be there. They're going to be influencing us. And we do have to be on guard against them. So try to come more up to the mode of goodness. And then it's easier to transcend. Just like, you know, maybe we, we would do things like sell books. So when we would go out for book distribution, sometimes the mode of passion would be there. You know, get the guy to buy a book. Sell him more than one book. You know, buy a bunch of books and get him to give a big donation. You know, oh, he's got so much money, get him to give you know, more money. Our thinking is not always for Krishna, but often it's, you know, I want to be known. Oh, I, I, I'm a big salesman. I'm a big book distributor. So our own material consciousness influences our activity. So we do want to be on guard against the, the modes of nature and try to come more to the mode of goodness and then transcend goodness. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Now, my curiosity is all living entities took birth on this planet. Either desire or karma. Okay. If it is a karma, it has to follow the nature of law. If it's a desire, with the approval of the Supreme, Supreme, he has been allowed to come and get his desire fulfilled. Now, if this desire falls under the category of demonic, and that karma, fall also under the same category, 
and they are carrying out the duty, desire and karma. Does it force on sin? Sin. Is it? If they are doing the desire, they are carrying out the desire with the approval of Tupriyam, and the karma takes place in the nature of uh, law or uh, nature of law, they are doing it the same way. By doing it, the Dhamma, they are they falling under the category of sin as I am. I'm trying to understand your logic, I don't know. <laughs> You can, uh, they have their karma, and according to their karma and their desire, they do certain things. So the, the desire is coming because of the karma. They're connected, the desire and karma are interrelated. That karma, which they have, put them in a particular position, and with that particular situation, certain desires will be there. So these desires, it depends what, what they desire. If they desire in a sinful way, then it's sin. But if they desire for the service of Krishna, then it's not. You have to consider what, what are they going to, what are they doing? What is their desire? It's not just any desire. But if they're desiring for their sense gratification, then it's sin. Yes. Sin. Because they're desiring for their sense gratification. But in the Kali Yuga, you don't suffer for your desires. You, you suffer for the activities. So if you desire to do something, and then when you go and do it, then you get, yeah, then that's sin. There's no sin in the desire. The sin is in the activity. When you actually do something, that is the sin. But the desire is not sin. The desire, that's in your mind. In the Kali Yuga, you don't get reactions for your desire. But you get reactions when you do something. You understand? Thank you, Maharaj, I read uh, Prabhupada's Letter to a devotee. He said that. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I read a letter from uh, which Prabhupada sent to a devotee. And he mentioned that uh, book distribution is also Sankirtan. And reading the books is also Sankirtan. Maybe you can comment on that. Yes, there are many varieties of Sankirtan. They have kitchen sankirtan, deity worship sankirtan. Sankirtan means glorifying the Lord. But we're particularly speaking about Harinam Sankirtan. It's Harinam Sankirtan which is particularly powerful. Other sankirtan, other activities have to go on, of course. But what's the, the, the main activity is this chanting of the holy name. There must be the chanting of the holy name. So that should be done. You read the books, if you read the books, then you chant the holy name. You want to chant the holy name, you want to do Sankirtan. That's what the books are telling us. The more we read the books, the more Prabhupada is emphasizing chanting, chanting the holy name, doing Sankirtan. So you read the books. And if you distribute the books, yes, distribute books, very nice. But you should know what's in the books. And in the books, it talks about chanting the holy name. We're distributing the books. We don't just sell the books. We have to follow what's in the book. Right? That's like if the teacher smokes cigarettes and tells the student, don't smoke. It's not very good teaching. So people are said, buy the book. And, and, did you read the book? No, I just sell the books. 
So that's not very good. We, we want to read the books ourselves. How many of you have done the Bhagavad Gita course? How many of you have done the seminars on the Bhagavad Gita, a chapter a day? Put your hand up. Have you done it? Very less people. You haven't done the Bhagavad Gita? You haven't heard the seminars, a chapter a day on the Bhagavad Gita? It's very valuable. How many of you have done Bhakti Shastri? Put your hand up. Not many. So, you know, we encourage all of you, you have to read the books. And the best way to study the books, you take these courses. This Bhagavad Gita, you may find it difficult to read. You may have trouble to go through it. We have a course. Very nice course, a chapter a day. They have it in English, they have it in Tamil, they have it in any language you want. But you, you should do it. You hear from a devotee, they will teach one chapter, one hour a day, and they take you through one chapter, you can cover the whole Bhagavad Gita and understand what's going on in the Bhagavad Gita. So this course is available online. Very nice, you should try to take this course. And we have it at three levels. Some of our centers, like one center in India, Mangalore, in Mangalore, they're teaching Bhagavad Gita, and they, they teach it in, uh, I think it's 15 different languages. They have 500 teachers, and they have thousands all taking courses like Bhagavad Gita and Bhakti Shastri and so on. So, you're coming here to the temple, you would be well, you would be advised that you should also be taking part in the Bhakti Shastri course. One has just begun. How many classes have begun? How many? Already five classes. So you missed the first five classes, but you could catch up easily. First five chapters, maybe two chapters covered. One chapter. Huh? Oh, first two chapters only. So you, you, you can catch up. You want to take Bhakti Shastri course. If you, if you take the chapter a day, one chapter, one hour a day, and you go through each chapter. Very nice, with slides, you know, PowerPoint presentation. It's very good, very valuable for the devotees to understand what's happening in the Bhagavad Gita, what's taking place. So I know His Holiness Jagataka Swami Maharaj, he wants so much, all the devotees should read Prabhupada's books. And Certainly all of you come to the temple, you spend the time here, sit in the class on the you should also try to attend these courses, study these courses. And this way you can enrich your life by hearing more this philosophy, this knowledge. Alright? Any other question? Hare Krishna, and then ask questions. Hare Krishna, we thank Maharaj for a nice, wonderful explanation of the process. Three Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo. Panchakal Patru Vyasa, Kupas, Nubi Vyasa, Patitana, Pavini Vyo, Vaishna Vyo, Bo. Maharaj will be here in care for another few more days until the 25th. So for the next four days we will announce Maharaj will be giving different seminars. Uh, we'll let you know in our uh, announcements later. So please take advantage. Maharaj is here. 
Brazilian or Pakistan both, so we have to take <coughs> full opportunity to uh, get this association. And then um, Maharaj was emphasizing today's on his class on Harinam, Mistre Vyana Harinam, in Banda Kindara, organized by Krishna Chandra Prabhu and Sri Khan. We had 35 devotees who attained uh, this Harinam, this Maharaj is encouraging you. Very nice. Everything is there. You just have to come and join the Harinam team, sing and dance the holy name of the Lord. And on this Harinam day, we have uh, distributed Bhagavad Gita, two Chinese Bhagavad Gita, one English, one Tamil, and twenty small books. And Japamala, 29 Japamala. We have collected uh, from power 43. Total Lakshmi we collected was 1,100. And it's all there. Very nice. We had all of uh, 